Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated, and today I will show you how to create an interactive sales tracking dashboard that allows you to track the progress of your sales team as well as progress of your deals. And we will be using for that Airtable as your CRM as well as the interface designer as your charting dashboarding tool. All right, let's get started. As you can see on our dashboard, we can see the progress of the interactions that our sales team is taking throughout the weeks. We have the total count of interactions that they are taking. We know how many discovery meetings they have scheduled, how many demos they have presented, as well as how many prices discussions they had. We also know from this dashboard how many different accounts, clients, they have met through each of the month. And the next step that we will be building will also be building the breakdown of what type of interactions are happening by each one of our sales salesperson, as well as we will move on to tracking the opportunities. So we would look at what is the stage of all the opportunities that we have, what is the values, the value of the opportunities, and when are they coming online with the stage that they are in right now. And we will also be able to see who is bringing those deals and which stages they are sitting at the moment as well, whether this is the count of the particular deals or whether what is the value of those deals. So this is the dashboard that we'll build from the scratch today. And to do it, we'll start with a completely new Airtable base. And once you open the Airtable interface and create a new base without any title, here on the right hand side, you can start with a template. So we will look for a CRM template. And in this case, we will be using a sales CRM template with some minor modifications. So let's select this template here. All right, and you can see that there are some basic estimated charts here already done, but what we will do, we will create a full screen dashboard, which will show you more information. All right, so let's go to the interface designer. Uh, but let's make a copy of this window so that we can be also editing the data inside of the inside of the base. So let's open the interface designer and let's click start building. Here we can start with the default set and we would start with a dashboard. So let's select this template for our dashboard and let's click next. What we will be mostly summarizing in our dashboard will be the interactions. So let's click on the interactions. And let's take all the default elements into our picture. All right, so we have a basic starting point for us and let's start working on the customization. So the first element that we will start with will be the count of the total number of interactions that, that we had this month. You can see that we are already counting here interactions by default, but we would like to add a date range to that. So let's go to the filter above and let's configure the filter by adding additional data properties. So you can see that it showed up here on the right hand side and then we can ignore all the connected elements because these are all the connected elements to that filter so that's not relevant for now and as a filter we will add a condition and the condition will be the date and the date will be after exact time because the data that we are having inside of this pre-filled um, error table is from 2020, we'll just use this as a, as a sample. So we will start after exact date. Right, so this is exact date, is exact date, but we want to have it on or after that exact date. Okay, so you can see that after that date, we had 49 interactions. So we can close this one here. And here we will start customizing this one. So here let's call it all interactions. Here we'll call it discovery. And we will add one more filter here. We can see that it's already using that filter from the top level here. We'll add additional filter, which will be type and the type will be discovery. Next type will be demos in similar way. And we will duplicate it one more time to create the pricing discussion. All 
All right. And now let's build a weekly progress by each of the team members. So here as a X axis, we will select the date and we can group it in any way we want, even minutes of the day, but we will select a week. So we'll have automated grouping by, by weeks. Here, what you can see as a Y axis, it is doing the record count, how many records are existing within this interaction table. So it's counting all the records on that particular day, which is correct, this is the number of interactions. But what we would like to do, we would like to do one extra grouping and we would like to group it by the owner of this particular interaction. Since we don't have by default the owner here, in this particular sales CRM, you can see that on the opportunities table, we have the owner assigned to particular opportunity and then that owner is assigned to an account and their interactions and so on. So what we will do here is on the interactions, since we know that opportunity contains the salesperson responsible, we will add, add the lookup field and we will ask for the lookup field of the owner owner. So now we have the owner for that particular interaction. By the way, it's also very easy to add for all the people in your sales team those interactions because you can use the automated form over here, which allows your team members to easily update the CRM after the call, selecting what opportunity was this call or meeting relating to, selecting the date, deciding the type of the meeting, adding who was the contact that they have spoken with, and then doing submission with any additional information here. All right, coming back here. So now we have the owner, we'll come back here and we will group this by the owner. So you can see the owner is already here. And you can see at the moment, every week here is grouped by a specific owner. And to make the legend a little bit more visible, we will put it at the bottom. Okay, so now we know how many people, how many interaction has each of our sales team members had in a particular week. And the next step, we will move this one out of the way and we will duplicate this chart here so that we can see out of those interactions, whether these are different companies, whether this is the same company, so that basically we can know how many companies we are contacting either per week or per month. So here we will have to do one more modification to this table because at the moment for each interaction we only have the contact and we have the opportunity but we would like to know the the number of the accounts that we are contacting so number of the companies most likely it will be one to one to the opportunities but let's add it nevertheless so we will take the company from the contact and company that means account All right, so here we have the accounts and let's go back to the designer. So we will change the grouping of the interactions and we will make them, for example, monthly and we will turn off the grouping. So we'll turn off group by. And at the moment it is summarizing all the records, but we don't want to be summarizing all the records because these are multiple contacts to, for example, the same company. So we will do field summary and then we will select field account and we want to aggregate it using distinct so we want to count the distinct number of specific accounts so we can see that this was only five accounts in that specific month we can also change it back to week if we would like to have comparison how many interactions are we having so we can see that these are in that particular week these are two interactions and these were also two different companies here. We can also add some sort of label so it's easier for us to know. All right, and by the way, right now you can see here that also when you change the date range, for example, if you change the month to be one month ahead, you can see that the dates automatically update. So if you would change it to for example, another month, 
this will automatically update using the dates following these conditions in the filter. So it could be, for example, is after one month ago. So it could be only information that are coming from last 30 days and so on, depending on the setup that you would like to have. But let's start with a longer date range here, just for the example. Okay, so now we would like to know one more thing. We would like to know what types of meetings is our team scheduling and who is for example creating more discovery calls who is having more pricing discussions so we will clone this one again and here as the x-axis we would change instead of using the date and time we would take the owner and as a type of grouping we will not group it by the owner we will group it by type and you can see that the colors are actually following the type of colors that we have here on the type of the meeting. If you would like to override this, you can change the color scheme to, for example, use the default Airtable color scheme. In this case, let's also move the label to the right. All right, and now let's do some analysis of the opportunities that we have in the pipeline. I'll add a divider here. Here the informations are coming, the data is coming from the interaction table, but we can also change it. And here we will do opportunities. So you can see automatically, we can see the status closed, lost, and so on. So now we can update it and we can say, but what is also interesting is to see that status of this opportunity is by a given month. So let's clone this table over here and let's put it on the right hand side. And let's change the format of the bar of the chart to a bar chart. And instead of using the status as axis, we will use here expected close date. So this is when we expect that this particular deal will be closed. All right, and here we will use the record count and we also need to bucket it by the full month so that it looks a little bit more reasonable. So now we see the status of different opportunities, but we would like to group them also by what is the status of each opportunity. So now we can see that in August we have seven deals in a proposal stage and then we have one deal in evaluation stage. And then we can see that for June, there is already three deals that have been won and additional two deals that have been lost. We can also clone this to see the value of the deals. So here at the bottom, instead of doing a record count, we will select field summary and we will use estimated value. Instead of average, we will use the sum. And again, group by status of the opportunity. So we can also see that the value of the opportunities that are in the proposal stage is 145,000 and the value of the evaluation is this. So this is very helpful to know how soon the deals will be coming online. And let's also try to do this analysis per each of the salespeople. So let's clone this one as well. So we would like to know which employee has most deals in which stage. So this means that as an X axis, we will use the employee owner of the deal. And you can see that straight away here, you can see what is the status per each deal. We would actually like to sort it in a specific way. So here we can select that we want to sort it, for example, by the Y value. So this way, we know who has the most deals in terms of value. We could also see this in terms of actual number of deals, because at the moment you can see that we are using field summary sum. Let's clone this and let's change the first one to only do the count of the deals. So here is the number of deals counted and here on the right hand side, you can see the value of the deals. Finally, we would like to know which of our employees is having the most deal that are won. So let's put a different cut of the data for that. And we will use here the status. And we will group it by the owner. And we change the sorting to follow our alphabetical order of the deal status. 
but to make it even more clear we can also separate it and for example only show the winning and lost deals so this means we would add one more filter here and this filter would be status is any of the following status so we only keep those two and this way we can see which of which one of our sales um, sales people is having the biggest number of deals won and which one is having the number the biggest number of deals lost so so this is just one example how you can utilize the interface designer to make it easier for you to track the progress of your sales team so you know where they are and what is the number of the deals that you're having in pipeline and you can still be using for this the Airtable CRM setup also connecting this to other sources of data when it's when it's useful for you and other systems I hope this was useful for you and if so please like and subscribe and uh, sign up for more business automation videos thank you guys mm -hmm.